from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is the Schilter family from Kitchener, Ontario, in memory of Hans Schilter, who died on the 23rd of December, 1982, and for all the living and deceased members of their extended family, for forgiveness of the deceased and good health and blessing for the living, for world peace and the end to pandemic. The second are John and Leticia Fleck from Scarborough, Ontario, in celebration of John's 81st birthday on the 25th of June, for healing and good health of mind, body, and spirit, for God's blessings in all their endeavors, and for the deceased members of the Fleck, Espinosa, and Sandoval families. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. And now as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us ask the God of mercy and compassion to forgive us our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Since many boast according to human standards, I will also boast. But whatever anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am talking like a madman. I am a better one, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless floggings, and often near death. Five times I have received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger of sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is made to stumble? Am I not indignant? And if, and if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be God. Bless the Lord at all times. 
His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. From all their afflictions, God will deliver the child. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. From all their afflictions, God will deliver. The just. Look to him and be radiant, so your face shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. From all their afflictions, God will deliver the just. <clears throat> alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness! The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our cantor sang, From all their afflictions, God will save the just. It doesn't seem to seem true about our first reading today. Paul was really, went through everything, as they said, went through the ringer beaten 40 times, five, uh, five times, 40 lashes left one, beaten by rods three times, shipwrecked. What did Paul think when he was going through all this? From all their afflictions, God will save their just. Paul was a good rabbi. He knew the Torah. He knew the Psalms. They would sing the Hillel, the Hallel Psalms at the Passover. <clears throat> at that time, they would praise God. Praise God for delivering the people of Israel through the Exodus experience. Praise God for giving them water from the rock when they were thirsty. Praise God because God gave them manna from heaven and quail. And yet, would Paul have said those words, I will bless the Lord at all times, forever his praise will be on my lips, when he received all those lashes? 
And if you read the letters of St. Paul, that's precisely what he says. I rejoice in the sufferings of Christ. He was no masochist. But when he had all those difficulties, he realized that he was doing nothing more or nothing less than what his own master had done. Suffering is the warp and woof of our everyday life. If any of you don't have any problems or worries, come to me and you can take some of my own. But all of us suffer at some time or the other. And times when, you know, I get one difficulty after another, I used to say, Lord, why me? Why me? How many of you all have said the same thing? You go to church regularly, you say your prayers regularly, you're kind, you serve in food kitchen, and then the one disaster after another. Why me? I used to say that until one day while I was praying that, deep down in my heart, I heard the Lord said, why not you? And I didn't have an answer. Why me? And the Lord said, why not you? I have been truly blessed with good health, apart from a virus in my lung which causes me to cough, and I've gotten so used to it that it bothers others, but I hardly notice it. I had wonderful parents that lived up to their 90s and lived with us right until the day they died. They gave me a good example of a Christian life. I have wonderful brothers and even more marvelous sister-in-laws who understand what I'm trying to do in my life. I have cousins galore and their uncles and their parents who have supported me in my vocation all throughout, through good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. And so I don't ask the Lord any time more, even though I'm tempted, why me? Because I really do not have an answer. Why not me? God has blessed us so much, more than we deserve. And that brings us to our reading from the gospel where Jesus says, I'm calling you to a relationship with God. So don't store up things that can distract you from God. Do not store up treasure that moth can, break, moth can destroy and thieves can break in and steal. Through our lives as Jesuits, <clears throat> as religious, we don't accumulate things that people normally accumulate in the houses, but we do accumulate books and scarves and jackets and all the other gifts that are given to us. I've known certain Jesuits when they were moved from one community to another had to get a U-Haul truck. For me, my model was my associate when I was working in Guyana in the parish of Annunciation at a place called Malgré II on the west bank of the Demerara. He was my assistant and he was in his 70s. And one day the superior said, well, Father John King is getting very old. I think he should be brought back to Georgetown. And so I went to Father John King and I said, you know, you don't seem to be having very good health over here. After four years, um, the superior wants you to go to Georgetown. So take two or three days, get your stuff together, and I will drive you there. It's only 30 minutes away. 15 minutes later, he came with a little cardboard box, and he says, I'm ready. He had one shirt, an extra shirt, one extra pant, some underwear, a fair pair of floppy slippers, and a pruning uh, knife, which he used to work in the gardens. It brought tears to my eyes. This is the way I'd like to be towards the end of my life, having nothing but the Lord and the Lord in plenty. Well, why do we accumulate so many things in our lives? It's because we do not feel secure enough. Jesus had said, God had said to the Israelites, you know, I have given you everything. I've even made you a covenant with you. I've called you my people, and I will be your God. I have fed you all throughout, and now I'm going to make this covenant and give you the Torah, the Ten Commandments, to show how you can live in this relationship with me. And I thought to myself, after all this and after all the care, why did these people go and build a molten calf, a calf made out of gold, which they had taken from them, from their own little treasures that they had, and worshipped it. Didn't they see how ridiculous it was? 
It was something that didn't have life, something that couldn't speak. And then I stopped, and I realized that nearly all of us have got molten calves in our lives, little calves made out of gold. Might be a cell phone, might be a, a, a computer, might be tickets for the Blue Jay game or the Maple Leafs, even though they are on a losing streak. Or we can't give them up. We hold on to them with hoops of steel, and as a result, we keep on floundering together with them. We have traded things that are perishable for a relationship with God that is imperishable. And therefore, we have to stop and think how like the Israelites the we are over thousands of years ago in the Exodus. They kept on holding things for themselves when God was saying, I'm giving you something even better, something even greater. And that is what God is giving you and me today. Are we going to trade it in for a molten calf? Or are we going to say to God, praise to you, just like the psalmist said today? God bless you all. Would you join me now as we pray together? May the annual celebration of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus renew and deepen the faith of his love for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. During this month of June, as we pray to the devotion to the Sacred Heart, may we trust in the Lord to love, to show us the path of mercy, compassion, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our sponsors today, that the Lord may keep them in good health, peace of mind and health and body, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for peace in the world, especially the troubled spots, may the Lord show all of us, not only the leaders in these places, that we can be ministers of peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer you these our prayers, those made aloud and those in the depths of our hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. <coughs> through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and the glory of his name for our good and good of all the Holy Church. Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices join with them in humble praise as we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, all the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our Canadian martyrs, Jean de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and companion, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this year church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in one bread and in the one chalice, grant, grant us so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.